Bill? Just a, a historical point on the Irish <clears throat> as far as whether or not they wanted to serve before this when the regiments were all volunteer. The uh, 69th New York, which was all Irish, all volunteer, um, nobody gave more blood at Antietam than they did. No state lost more people than New York in the war, not Virginia, where the war was fought, <clears throat> not any of the southern states. New York lost the most, and tens of thousands of those people were Irish who volunteered and fought bravely. <laughs> One of my favorite um, exercises or that I like to do, well, one, one I've only done one with one group, and maybe you could do it, which is to do the Marichal Walk, which is uh, go downtown to five point areas and take the kids to see where she lived, mm -hmm. the place that's key to her. When I was down there a few years ago, the only one that was as it was was 330 Pearl Street. It was still the same brownstone. Uh, it was a condo thing. But um, the Alfred E. Smith houses, around 64 Oliver Street, where she lived. 20 Vanderwater Street is the entrance ramp to the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh. And 144 Cinder Street is the Vietnamese restaurant where I took kids to the <laughs> 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 And that, that, I think that's all they'll remember from the Mauritia no. one. <laughs> it's Frankfurt. Isn't it Frankfurt over by Spring? Frankfurt. Uh, uh, the other, uh, some uh, of you know, the Dover, other thing I like to Pearl do and Cherry, Richa, the intersection. and this ties into, again, making those connections, is to remind them, as the, the play did, that the only reason I could do this book is because she and her family cared about their history. That her father said, I want you to write a book. I couldn't do it. You know, a hand turned a baton. She, um in turn, does what she can, preserves what she can, hands it over to the nephew. Yeah. He sees to it that upon his death, it goes to his friend, Arturo Schomburg, mm -hmm. the bibliophile. Mm -hmm. So that's how it ends up in the Schomburg Center, which was NYPL, and it gets preserved. And I tell the kids that imagine if her nephew had said, what is this old stuff, which is in the archives, it's, I print in the book, one page of the inventory the father made of their losses. Mm -hmm. It's like 12 pages long. Um, the images that I use in the book of her family came from what's at the Schomburg, so I had to get CT's name, um, the family. And I think I had a couple of choices with the father, and I ended up choosing the one with him in black, because we didn't like that. Mm -hmm. um, also, her uh, graduation essay is, was preserved. So. I tell kids, I said, so if her nephew had said, I can't be bothered, this is all garbage, I'm just going to pitch it, we wouldn't have her story. And I try to explain to them that what ends up in the history books is based on what is left behind. Mm -hmm. And that if they don't leave a record of themselves and their people and their block and their neighborhood, when the history books are in it, are written, they won't be enough. You know, Ms. Baldwin, when you came to our school and you mentioned the Schomburg Center for Research, a lot of children, they didn't know what we were talking about. And a lot of times as educators, we take for granted when we're reading, when we're telling certain stories that they're supposed to know. So one of my students, when you were in the classroom, they asked me, what's the Schomburg? Well, yesterday we went to the Schomburg, and they were excited. They were really excited. They remember bits and pieces about Marichal, but when you said the Schomburg, and this is where you can go for research, and you can research people in history, you know, maybe not of so importance like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, or those people, but people like Marichal, they were really excited. And when they got to the Schomburg, they were looking around. And I told them, I said, this is the new Schomburg, because I remember I would go with my sister, and it was like that. It's old, old, old building, and you probably know what I was mm -hmm. talking, what I'm talking about. But they were excited, and so I feel for them, they learned, if it wasn't so much about the book, but they do know, now I know where I can go to do research on Richa or anyone else, because the Schomburg was something that, wow, this Baldwin told us about the Schomburg. And then their parents didn't know where the Schomburg or what it was, and in return they went home and told their parents about Well, I guess this is how we educate, right? I mean, I always think, even in some of my writing, and I, I fight with editors sometimes on language, because I'm always saying, don't give the kids everything. 
You know, give them a reason to be curious. Give them a reason to ask a question. Uh, I remember once I did a school visit somewhere in the Bronx. It wasn't any of these schools you guys here. But um, the, the question was what writers did I admire who influenced me? And I was Chekhov and Hemingway and Ellison and whoever. And I remember later, this like awful woman who was a class principal said, all those names were right over the kid's head. They never heard of any of them. And I said, but I'm planting a seed. They will. So I'm just going to talk, I'm just going to say Dr. Seuss because, oh, you heard of him? You know, I felt like, you know, that's how we keep our children, frankly, ignorant, dull, and bored. Is that we never challenge them. We never use, sometimes we, we refrain from using certain words because we'll say they won't, they won't know that. Well, some of them will know it and give them that victory. And then if you've created a loving environment, the ones who don't know things will say, what's that? If a, if a kid is too afraid to ask a question, then that's our fault. Then we're doing something wrong. Because we're, I mean, I mean where else other than school to, to ask a question? That's the place to be curious. They come there to be curious. And I have to say, I mean, the, the work that um, you guys have done um, makes me feel that my liberty has a bit of man. Because what you've done is you take, I give you a starting point, and you take it to the next level. And there's so many places you can go with this book. Civil War, draft riots, uh, black middle class in the 19th century, civil rights movement, like you said, because people, we have that image in our head of uh, Rosa Parks, you know. And even there's a New Yorker, what was her name, Jennings? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Jennings. Jennings. Yeah. Who Richard's parents probably knew, because they all knew each other, who got thrown off a streetcar. Uh, but, you know, thankfully now we are getting away from that that really simplistic view of everyone's history, which is somebody was a first, which may be the first you know about, but not the first. Um, I even try when I'm writing to not use that term because I realize, well, we don't know. There's so much history we don't know. You know, so you'll say the first that we know of, or the first known. Um, or very often I find with black history, people say, a little known fact, and I was, I think, well, black people know about that. I mean, you know, it's like, you know. Someone was talking, did a recent, the, the, the article on um, lightning, the uh, skin color. Right. And, 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 you know, light skin having a premium and all of that. And I was like, I've been known that. I mean, yeah. you know. It was, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think, again, I think Maricha allows you, I hope you use it to say, first of all, that this is American history. You can, you can use it to go into what it was like to be a girl, what would have been her, her schoolwork, what would have been her props, uh, what would have been like to do chores in, in those days. Question? Just um, you talk about the day that you saw the box at the Schomburg and then kind of writing this into history where in a way that it wasn't before. Marsha put that uh, color picture on the bottom to right below the flag, the th row of three. And I'd sent that out a while ago. It's a school that, you know, since you got the box, wrote the book, we've now seen Maricha has been in New York historical curriculums that have gone out to all the TH people that we've, we've had over the last five years. And a few years ago, there started in Brooklyn, where she taught, is now the Maricha Lyons School, and that's a picture. If you get, when you get your book signed, if you go buy it, you'll see it's a build, not, what do you call it? A, uh, a mural, thank you. It's a mural in the schoolyard with the same picture of the Centania's book of Maricha Lyons. And so now, now the whole school, it's a new vision school too, they do a lot of interesting things is dedicated and in perpetuity that name will, will be uh, is written back into history and that, that's a pretty cool thing to know somebody like you that did that help do that yeah, but again you know when you think about it it comes from Diana Chateaunier saying Tanya I think you might be interested yep but it comes from the boy that saved the stuff too yeah or yeah. whoever it was yeah, yeah. that's how it all gets you know done